I mean, I don't know why I feel the need to straighten up for Smallville, but I guess I'll sit forward again and be proper. Okay, I guess we'll do that. All right, I'm moving forward. Yeah, you probably should have just said that for you and just to this point for the the, the real discussion. Yeah. Unless, unless you're planning to put some passion into this that I'm unaware of. Maybe, maybe there will be passion. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's passion. Can, can I have passion anymore with Smallville? Am I just dead inside when it comes to it? like you know? Am I just like numb? It's like eh. well, let's find out. <laughs> so this is season one, episode fifteen of Smallville. It's called Nicodemus. Uh, this is the episode where a flower that uh, Joe Morton's been working on ends up basically acting like red kryptonite, except not for Clark, for everyone else, where they all start acting like assholes and the other their inner desires just start like spiraling out of control and they just go for it, um, including. But I was like, unlike red kryptonite, they they do slip into comas and die within a few days. Sure, yeah, that happens later. But at first, it's like red kryptonite. You get Jonathan Kent, um, you know, burping in Lexi's face, and then eventually going to shoot the bank manager for refusing a loan, which leads to him accidentally shooting Clark point blank in the chest. Which I had a problem with that visual effect. And the first shot where he actually fires the gun, you can clearly see his shirt doesn't get any like holes in it but when it cuts to the yeah, second shot me. yeah it really bugged me it was like what, where's the holes in his shirt you know, speaking of visual effects, this is one of those episodes where again like 30 40 seconds in I, I remembered and i remembered the plant spitting yes pump, shall we say and in my mind that effect looked atrocious and then i saw it, i was like oh it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be you know I, I i remembered the effect and i was like oh that's not going to look very good that's going to have aged really badly and it, it looked okay to be fair mm. yeah I mean, it's not it's not amazing but it, it didn't stand out as it as particularly awful like i thought it was going to that's, that's sure fair um so then lana gets infected by it and we get the 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 you know, the, the sexy version of Lana strutting down the hall in school and everyone's looking at her. Um, and she it basically just means she wears some boots. She, she wears boots and shows a little bit more more arms, basically. It's, it's it's not... Do you know what the thing that made me laugh about this is I feel like, yeah, we, you know, you watch, like, Riverdale now. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 yeah, they're all wearing that just, you know, that, that's just a normal outfit, right? I guess the point is that she doesn't normally dress like that, so that's why it sticks out to the characters. But I have to admit, I did oddly feel like, other than the fact that she was wearing boots and was wearing a bit more makeup, it didn't feel like that much of a transformation to me. It still felt relatively conservative, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't call it conservative, but by, like, high school teenager standards, sure. You You know, like... Yeah, but I wouldn't have said, oh, that's really out there. Yeah. If she walked in like a cat suit or something like that, or sure, but I feel like okay, if someone walks in wearing that, you, you know, it's not that weird. Yeah, because they weren't even like like proper stripper boots or anything like that. They were still just kind of normal boots. Yeah, yeah, it was just kind of. It, it, if anything, it was more just the smirk she had in her face as she looked like she wanted to have sex with everyone that moved. That that was the the real thing that looked different. Yeah, yeah, I can't argue with that. And of course, when she just strips off for the pool. Yes, with the body double. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. It was, well, it was very notable because every time there was like a close up of the like the underwear, or whatever, it was always very conveniently like with no head. Was yeah. Um, for for whatever reason, this is a, this is a heavy body double moment. Um, but hey, so no, no, I'm not even this a complaining. I'm not complaining because I wanted to see Kristen Crook like in their underwear. <laughs> I'm complaining because it just felt awkward in the scene because every time it cut between them, I felt like I could tell. Yeah. I think what is a little bit jarring is like, okay, it's just a scene in your underwear. Like a lot of actors do that, but yes. it's not a big deal. So it felt particularly weird that she felt like, oh no, you know, I'm not doing that. I wonder. Do you think she was under eighteen at the time, and that's why? Maybe I don't think she was. Right. Let's say she was. Se- she? Let's say she was seventeen. So there was some ethical concerns, and they said, no, no we was a body double. I mean, she was born in eighty two. Nah, well, nah, she'd be like 18, 19. She, she, she has to be 18, 19, yeah, she yeah. has to be. Um, yeah, I don't know, I, it was just a thought. Um, but she's, yeah, so, yeah, cause so she basically, she tries to get Whitney to blow off class. And Whitney's had like a complete 180 this season where now he's like really serious about his studies and like he's like a good, good little boy. Um, 
Um, yeah, but now he's failing. He's like, oh shit, I should probably actually do it. It's, 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 you know, to be fair, I think it's because he lost his scholarship now. So he's like, oh shit, I actually have to yeah. do the classes. So she dumps him on the spot and then goes to Clark and gets all flirty. And Clark's all, da doy. And then she drags him to the, the swimming pool and strips off and has all these little one liners, like mid. Like she throws like one item of clothing and she has a little one line and then she'll do a little flip. And then she'll have yeah. another line, and then she'll, and she eventually like throws him in the pool and makes out with him. And and then Batman's out of the scene. And then Batman's out of the scene, so that Clark's left in the pool with his clothes on like an idiot, as the principal's all like, mm, like Mr. Kent. And, 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 and then you know, Clark says, "Clark's like, oh yeah, the principal didn't even see him. I'm like, how? She literally pushed you in like ten seconds before he showed up. If that. Joe, you know Joe was odd to me about this. Is that. Maybe it's a sign that she was really miscast. I don't think she's a good actress still, but she did feel oddly more comfortable with a bit of attitude. Not necessarily like being horny, but just the the smirk in her face just felt a little bit more natural for her, as opposed to playing did, the bookworm. Yeah. And it, it felt just kind of like it feels like you were just really miscast as Lana. I mean, you're still pretty bad, but like this this is a just just having like a bit of um, confidence actually kind of suits you better yeah just just to keep it in the in the in the superman world she'd probably have made a better lois than she would have alana but i'm not yeah. saying i want her as lois don't get me wrong but that confidence that you that you think of yes. with lois yes yeah our lines just felt a little bit less stilted stilted yes um they generally did. It was weird. It, it, this, you know, yeah. but um, and then she, you know she wants to claim the windmill that's out by somewhere. It's a weird, weird guy. Oh yeah, that's my my biggest desire. I want to climb a windmill and see Metropolis, which again makes me question: what is the geography in the distance between Smallville and Metropolis? Because sometimes it feels like they tell me it takes hours to drive there, and other times, well, I can see it from this field. If the ground's really flat. For the entire journey, then. <laughs> I mean, even if it's flat, how far can you see? I didn't think it was. I mean, for it to be a couple of hours drive, it has to be a significant distance, right? Um. It's far enough that whenever people go there, they have to stay overnight. That's no, not. No, they usually do. Have we had them go back and forth? Admittedly, I'm remembering something from a later episode, but I remember there's a scene later on where Clark goes to get these hot dogs from Metropolis because they're really good. And someone who doesn't know about his powers says, wait, you're going to make that round trip. You know, that's like, you know, Theo a round trip just for hot dogs or whatever it was. So yeah. I, don't think it's, I don't think it's a staying overnight thing. I think it's just like a... You know. I, okay, no, you're right. I do recall that now. Yeah. But that's that says okay. It's a it's a reasonable journey, right? It's it's, it's yeah. at least an hour, an hour and a half each way. Yes. I'm just I'm questioning if you could see that. I, I don't know. Maybe you can, and I and and my perception of of distance is flawed. But uh, I... seems seem, seems weird to me. There's hills everywhere here. You can't see shit. <laughs> Uh, you know, <laughs> everything's, point. Every, everything's disguised. I don't know if you're in completely flat farmlands, as far as the eye can see, and there's a big city in the distance with all these tall skyscrapers. I don't know. I don't know what distance you can still see that at. Uh, that that's fair. Admittedly, I think yeah, it looks yeah. much closer than what I know we would suggest in this episode when we see it at the end. Yeah, it doesn't look that far away, does it? It looks like... I mean, it still looks like maybe 20, 30 minutes away, but... Yeah, yeah, 30, 30 minutes maybe, but yeah. I, I just, I'd, I'd, I'd like the show to clarify the distance for me. <laughs> you want them to break it down? What, 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 no, what I need is I need them to start driving out and show me a road sign with the distance. Okay. Being like you know, Metropolis, sixty miles, whatever it is. That's what I need. Fifty-two miles. It should definitely be fifty two miles. Mm -hmm. This 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 was pre fifty two though, wasn't it? Fifty two was already an important number though, right? Before fifty two. It, it was, uh, yeah, but not to the same extent that it is now. Okay. Um. 
So then she falls into a coma. And so my, my big problem with this is at the end of the episode when everyone wakes up and we establish that no one remembers anything, right? I kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. I was like, oh, really? We're doing that? Everyone's forgotten everything. And it makes sense because he did use his powers in front of one or two people. But, yeah, you know, to, he goes to Lana and they're just sitting at the top of this windmill. And here's what really gets me. So the final scene of this episode is that Lana and Clark are on top of the windmill and he's got his, his hands around her eyes or whatever and he's like, okay, now you can open. And she opens her eyes and then top of the windmill. And I'm like, how did she climb up there? Keeping her eyes shut. Yeah. Yeah. How did that happen? I, I know Clark could jump up there and hold her, but he can't just do that with her. She doesn't know Yeah. 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 W- was she on his back as he was climbing? Like, right, maybe she climbed with her eyes shut. It's a ladder, right? You you can do that with your eyes shut. I thought it's just I I just it really took me. I, I stopped and thought about it. I'm like, how did like maybe, maybe if he goes up first, she climbs with her eyes shut. But here's the he thing: can, you, know, you can pull her up at the top to guide her, and so she doesn't you know, walk too far. Yeah, but she openly said at the start of the episode that she's never had the guts to go up and climb it. If you're if you're scared of doing something, yeah, do it with your eyes closed. That'll make it easier. I think it will. You're not seeing the ground that you're going to fall to. You're more likely to miss a rung and slip. Yeah, but you'll 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 just be gripping on for dear life, and you'll be reaching up really cautiously for each one. So, I don't know. Plays for me. No, I'm calling bullshit on this. Calling bullshit on it. Um, but so we do this thing here where, you know, he's like, uh, so she's like, I've been, oh, I spent all day apologizing to Whitney and apologizing to, to the, the, you know, to Lex and the, you know, the coffee shop that she now kind of half owns. <laughs> Cause she, you know, told everyone to get out, but give them a free drink. Um, and she flirted with Lex and stuff, but she, she's she's like, oh, I had to apologize. So she's like, hey, and you know, I, I can't believe what I was wearing. And he's like, oh, I kind of liked it. And I'm like, right, Clark, <laughs> I feel like it's not very subtle, is it? It's not very subtle at all. Um, and it, it feels more awkward than it does flirty. Like I think it was supposed to. I think he was going, oh, this will be a flirty thing to say. But oh, I, I kind of yeah, liked it. Yeah, and she's like, but I didn't like wearing it. Yeah, now I feel objectified. What are you doing, Clark? Um. But she's like, hey Clark, I didn't I didn't do anything like embarrassing or like something I shouldn't have with you, did I? Did I say anything, do anything, you know? And it, this really bugged me because this is like just the dialogue again is so on the nose. It's the, it's, it's the way she pauses and goes, did I? Like that feels really unnatural to me. Um, and it really bugged me because it was just playing this straight. Because it made me think of the hit television show Buffy the Vampire Slayer, specifically an episode called um, The Pack, season one episode, where Xander gets possessed by a hy- hyena. And at the end of the episode, he has a moment here that's just like this, where he's, he, he's like, oh, I've you know, forgotten everything. You know, I, I didn't do anything embarrassing in front of you guys, did I? He's like, nah, nothing. And they walk off, right? And again, it's the cliche moment, but the reason why it works in Buffy so well is that it's actually the setup for the joke, because the joke is, is that J- Giles turns up behind him and says, you know, Xander, I, you know, I did some reading on this, and there was nothing to suggest that you would lose any memories, and he turns and says, did you tell them that? He's like, your secret's safe with me. And it was like, okay, that they, they did the cliche thing to set up the joke, that, no, he actually yeah. does remember, he doesn't want, just doesn't want them to know that he remembers. This just doesn't. it would be embarrassing and awkward. Yeah. This just does this thing straight straight up yeah also it makes clark seem like a little bit of a dick that he's just like nah because she, she's looking at the way he reacts like she knows she must have done something for him to be smirking <laughs> like that and he's not telling her it's kind of a dick move right yeah especially it'd be one thing if it was just like because i mean in her underwear okay it's not that much different from a swimsuit right whatever but yeah. she did actually kiss him, and they, they, like, they made out for like a good 30 seconds or whatever it was. I feel like at that point, yeah, Something by, you should disclose. by the way, your tongue was in my mouth. We should probably just mention that, you know? Yeah, but but that doesn't play to a U2 song, so... <laughs> it's a beautiful day. I actually really like that song. It's, it's, it's proper, you know, that's going to be stuck in my head for like three days. I, 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 I like the song well enough. Uh, proper nostalgia. That was uh, that was constantly playing yeah. on the music channels was, back in my like. It was what twelve through thirteen sort of age age range. Yeah, yeah. It's a, a deep cut, right? It's like oh god, that takes you back. Yeah. Uh, but hey, so I never understood why so, that the music video for that was at an airport. I never got that. <laughs> I don't know. I 
think I think it's irony because airports are hell. <laughs> I don't know. I just never got it. I'm like, why, why an airport? Why? why? I don't get it. It's, it's like some some uh, like ads for cars are just like something random for thirty seconds, and at the end, oh, this is a Toyota advert by a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's every car ride or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah but at least some, some of the other ones have a car in it up before that point yeah yeah there, there, there are some types of advert where I, like i can tell you what a perfume advert is yeah yo, I, i've <clears> never <throat> seen it before but it starts i'd be like that's a perfume advert like every time i show it's the soft music really soft lighting you've got a model just lounging around usually there's, but, there's, yeah, okay, this is there's some ads that I've been seeing on YouTube recently for Durex, but I like them because they start as if they're an ad for like shampoo. They're right, like, okay. is, this, is this like a woman, like, you know, it's like a woman sort of, sort of like, a, like, a, like an afro type here, right? And she sort of like, she sort of, her head's going back and forth and spinning it around. It's like, it's like, oh, vibrant and, and flirty and fun. And, st- and then it's like an undetected gonorrhea. Date with Durex. I like it. It's a twist. Because it sets you up for the, the, the cheesy shampoo Joe, I'll advert. I'll tell you about an advert that killed me on YouTube recently. It's a, you know, save the pubs campaign. You know, like, you know taxes are hurting local pubs. And it plays it like, you know, those like those uh, those charity aid messages, you know, you know, like, oh, three people, you know, th- three kids die every minute. Like one of those videos. Oh, right, okay. It plays it like that. It's like three pubs close every day. And it's this really somber music. <laughs> I'm like, what am I watching? What is this? Should we do that at the end when we're promoting Patreon? Get sad music. You could compose some sad music <laughs> and be like, be like, every day we, we have bread for dinner. <laughs> Please send us your money on patreon.com slash milf with TV. There's a piano. Like, and show like a really sad picture of Tim looking really poor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you know it's funny? I think I have some of that music lying around from an old thing that i did at uni where we uh, uh, just one night we we as a joke we made a a fake charity advert like that it was for something i don't even remember what it was but it was something stupid like oh, i'm sure it was yeah I, I i don't remember what but it was whatever it was it was probably something i can't really say on this podcast to be quite honest with you that's that's fair so but we we did the full thing with all the music so that's probably still lying around somewhere <laughs> So the rest of the episode is just try to solve this flower thing. Lex, of course, feels responsible. There's a really ironic scene where Clark's like, don't worry, Lex, it's not your fault that this is happening. But it actually is, because he's the one funding Joe Martin. And, to then, research. and then 10 minutes later, you've got, this is all your fault, Lex. What are you doing? Yep, yep, yep. And Lex is going, hey, I had nothing to do with this, believe me. And, I mean, he's right. Is he? Yeah. Because the doctor, he, he, he didn't ask the doctor to look into the plants. He was... Uh, He's supposed to be researching well, meteorites. Yeah, but, he, but he, he says that right after he, like, Clark says, oh, do you know this doctor, dude? And he's like, oh, who's that? Like, he outright oh, lies no, right no. before he says it. Yeah, yeah. He lies about that part of it. But when he says, you know, I have nothing to do with this. I, you know, he says that. He said, I had nothing to do with this. You believe me. And, and Clark's like, I don't. And it was like, well, that was true. Technically speaking. Technically, but not morally. That's fair. He's Can't still funding the research, and at the end, he's like, you know, I still like, I like all these ideas you've got. I'm going to put you in a private lab, like you know. So yeah. Lex doesn't come out of this squeaky clean. He he is he feels guilty. Oh, no, he God. should feel guilty. And you know, Jonathan and Lana almost died. I mean, if Lana dying wouldn't have been so bad. But yeah. here we are. Here we are. Um, and we also have some stuff where Pete's jealous of Lex because you know he's he's better friends with Clark now, which is which is frustrating because. That makes sense as a plot beat to play. Yep. But why is this the first time we're getting even a hint of it? Yeah, we've never we've never heard of this until now, not really. And the bigger problem I have with this is that this is the first time Pete has had anything resembling his own character, like beat or plot or anything. Like a, a thing that makes is his. He's jealous of Lex because of the friendship with Clark. This is the first time he's had his own thing of any kind. I, th- I think you might be right, yeah. You know, 15 episodes in, <laughs> he's actually finally yeah. got a thing. And it just, it feels like a, just a throwaway thing so they can ha- justify him getting after him when he gets infected with the flower before the end of the yeah, episode. Yeah, pretty much. And this is, this, 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 you know, this, this is what it is. Uh, of course, he tries to, he, try, he tries to seduce Chloe first. 
of course. And then, and then he tries to kill Lex. He tries to kill Lex, yes. And then Clark shows up. Sure, and I, his whole I, thing. I have a couple of couple of like things. So on the oh, you know, Clark shows some of them his powers, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of. He grabs the gun out of Pete's hand, and Pete's like, "Oh, how did you do that?" Which I appreciate. He's he's surprised, right? Yeah. And the reason I appreciated that is because this comes what ten minutes after Lana, um, where. She drives up to this windmill in Lex's car that she has driven way going, going way beyond the speed limit, clearly. Right? Mm -hmm. And Clark just appears in the middle of this field ten seconds after she gets out of the car and she doesn't question it. She's focused on fulfilling her desire. She didn't, she didn't think about it. And Pete's focused on shooting Lex and he still questions it. Yeah, but the gun's taken out of his hand. Like That's an active thing interfering with, with what he's doing. Whereas this is just like, oh, he's behind me, whatever. Don't think about it. <laughs> I don't know, it kind of stood out as real bullshit to me. Doesn't think about it. She's not thinking straight. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was one of the one of the few things I appreciate with with uh, you know Lana's stuff mm -hmm. was uh, when you know when she's flirting with legs and she, you know and all that stuff. She's like. Yeah, what? Do, what? Do, you don't care about the business of this here. I mean, what do you care for, Shirley? You only did it because I asked you to to do it, and you want you want to keep me happy. She like calls him out on it, and it's like, well, we all know that's true. Yeah, although she clearly implies it's because he has feelings for her, which, I mean, technically he eventually does, but I don't actually think he's supposed to. Just I don't now. think he does here. No, no. Uh, I don't think he's supposed so to like for several said, seasons. But uh, Lex is is is, is a, an awful person. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's not atrocious yet, but he's not a good person. He's, he's morally grey at, at that best. But he, he's, he's not crossing that line, is he? No, no, no. He's he's not, he's not uh, having having intercourse with a high schooler. Well, at least <laughs> maybe he's done that in the past when he was too old for it, but when so shot yeah, me, maybe. Lex being not Lex. Now. Um, yeah, I mean, it wasn't the worst episode of Smallville so far. It's, let's be honest it's probably in the top half out of the 15 <laughs> at least that's not saying a whole lot but yeah sure it's not but it's 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 true <laughs> yeah yeah I, I mean lo, lo, Chloe and Lana kind of teamed up at one point to go and investigate that's what led to her being infected uh, yeah I guess that was just a, a different pairing so it was kind of interesting I guess even though now that you mention it, you're right. We don't really see them two together very often, do we? No. Uh, and usually Chloe's just jealous because Clark's into Lana and not into her. So she gets all mopey about it. Yeah. No, no worrying about that this episode in the one where Lana's literally throwing herself at him. Yeah, she's, she's very calm as, as she's hearing Clark's story about this afterwards. Clark's like, yeah, but she didn't really seem like it was her. She's like, good. There's something going on. It's fine. Nothing to worry about here. She was hoping she was dying. That's what it was. When when she went to the coma, Chloe was just like, "Yes, yes, take her out of the picture." Yeah. Oh, look, do you know what? I say that she did have that really awkward moment with Clark, where she's like, "Oh, she doesn't like you. Just move on. Just mm. get over it." Which I was like, "Oh, okay." Like, that felt really petty. Clark's like, "Oh, I can't just switch off my feelings for her," and she's like, "Ah, oh, who gives a shit?" Which I mean, don't get me wrong. I can I can sympathize with, but. It feels weird to, to have your friend just say that, right? It does. But hey, that's Smallville. <laughs>